In the beginning, God created, and God looks at his creation, and it's very good. Our origins are in God, and God creates perfectly, just the way he wanted. But then something happens. Adam and Eve sin, and when they do, brokenness enters the world. The relationships that God created perfectly now fall apart. Humanity is no longer in perfect alignment with God. They're no longer in perfect harmony with each other or with nature. Sin has entered the world and broken the relationships God intended from the beginning to be perfect. As we read the biblical narrative, we see that that fallenness is a new state of affairs. It's what's happening as history moves forward. Adam and Eve created in the image of God have children in the image of Adam and Eve. Sin, death, brokenness, struggle, turmoil, all those things God never intended in the first place become daily life for the daughters and sons of Adam and Eve. But God takes a look at this creation that was perfect and yet now is fallen, that was very good but is now broken. God takes a look at his creation and his people and says, I'm not willing to let it sit there. I'm not willing to have the story end that way. So God acts decisively in the person and work of Jesus Christ, in his cross, death, resurrection, open tomb. Everything Jesus does, he does for us to restore a new status to creation. The way creation God intended it is restored in Jesus Christ. New relationships with, between God and people, between people and each other, even between us and nature. Now, as we see God acting, acting decisively in the person and work of Jesus Christ, we need to notice a couple of things. One is that even though Jesus acts at a very particular time in history, in a very particular cultural setting, he's born of a specific virgin named Mary. He suffers under a specific governor named Pontius Pilate. He rises again on a specific day, the third one. Although Jesus comes in a very specific way into human history, yet that act of redemption is not bound historically. So throughout the Old Testament, all the people from Adam and Eve onward, as they look forward to the promise of the coming Savior, they look forward to the promise of the one who saved already in their present. Jesus' act of redemption is valid for them. As they look forward with the eyes of faith and grasp onto that promise, their sins are forgiven for the sake of Christ. It's their future participating in their present. And then the other thing we need to recognize is we're living in a time after God's decisive action in human history in Jesus, and yet before the end of all things. So we have both of these lines going on. Both the fallenness and the new creation are true of us. In Jesus Christ, by virtue of your baptism, you are already a part of the new creation. Before God, you are completely perfect and perfectly loved for Jesus' sake. And yet, as you go through your everyday life, you experience some of the same things Adam and Eve experienced. Brokenness and sinfulness and death. For now, we live in a world caught between these two lines, the old fallen creation and the new creation in Jesus Christ. Already now we have the gift of eternity, and yet it's lived out in the struggles of every day. That's not going to be the rest of our story forever. For again, God will act decisively in human history in Jesus Christ. Jesus will come again in glory, and then at that time, the old order of things will pass away. Sin, death, and devil will finally be destroyed, and then moving forward, all you have is creation just the way God intended. And already now, with the eyes of faith, we look forward to that historical event in the future, and already now, our future is participating in our present. So as you come to worship, as you come and kneel at the Lord's Supper, you are already partaking now in a foretaste of the feast to come. God creates and it's very good. Humanity falls and brings sin into the world. That's the new state of affairs until God sends his son to act decisively in history. All those who looked ahead are saved by faith. All those who even now look forward are saved by faith. And one day, Jesus will do away with sin, death, and devil forever, and we will live in a new creation. Notice we're not escaping creation, but creation is restored the way God intended it. That's the way the Bible tells the story from before the beginning to after the resurrection. It's a story about God and His love, a story of promise and redemption, a story of physical creation, even on into eternity. Perfect relationships with us and God, with us and each other, and with nature as well, all for Jesus' sake.